This is Joseph Drust, and welcome back to another episode of Ask ZBrush. So we had a question sent in asking, how can I apply planar UV mapping to a model? So to start off, I just have ZBrush loaded up, and I just have an example model file here loaded in. So this is a quick stylized cone tree. So I took some of the default 3D primitives that live over here, and then just quickly created a tree. So let's say I have a model like this and I want to do some gradient mapping. So I have a texture loaded in that's just a gradient here. And I want to generate a little forest maybe for a icon or a logo. And I just want to apply some gradient mapping to get some different color values on the mesh. Now with my model here, I just need to apply some quick UV mapping. So some planar mapping that will come across the model. So then when I apply that gradient, it will give me a color variation from top to bottom. So if I go to my tool palette over here and I open up the UV area, you can see that this model contains no UV information. So if I go to the tool palette and then go down to the texture map area and click on this texture map area here and select that gradient, you're going to see I'm going to get this note. So it's going to say texture mapping requires UV mapping. And so I need to apply this to my model before I can put that texture on it. Now to get a quick planar map in ZBrush, it's very simple. We just need to go to the tool palette, go to the UV map area, and then there's this create section over here. And in this create section, you have a whole bunch of different mapping formats you can apply quickly to a mesh. And one of these is UVP. So that stands for UV planar. So what this is going to do, it's going to look at your entire subtool and then just quickly apply some planar mapping to it. So with this gradient texture map here loaded in, if I click UVP, you're going to see it's going to be quickly applied to my mesh. And if I come over here to the texture map area and then go create new from UV map, you can see this is what it's doing. So it's taking that model, it's looking at it from one angle and then generating mapping from this. So you can see I'm getting mapping that's correlating to what I am seeing. So here I have that tree there as a planar mapped surface. So now that it's planar mapped, if I switch back to that gradient, I'm now getting this effect. Now this is really handy for coming through and generating some stylized meshes or coloring. It's very quick and easy to just take some gradient maps, apply some planar mapping to some models, and you're going to get some nice results. You can also come over to your material here and say set it even to flat color. So now I have this stylized kind of silhouetted tree here. And now I have one of these mapped. I can start cloning these to make a little mini forest. So I'm coming up here and select move, scale, or rotate to get to the gizmo 3D. I'm going to hold down the control key as I hover over one of these move screen things here. This is going to clone my object. Then I can rotate this around, maybe scale it a little bit, move it back in space some. So I got another little tree to my forest there. And then I can hold control and make a, another copy of that as well. Rotate this one this way, move it around. And at this stage, they're all having, you know, the similar UV mapping applied to it. Well, I can always go over here and reapply that UV mapping. So I've come over and hit UVP. This is now going to look at the entire subtool. So since I just was cloning parts internally, I now do new from UV map here. You can see this is now the planar mapped UVs I'm generating on this mesh. So you can use this to your advantage to quickly add some different objects and then just adjust the UV mapping. You can also clone these as many times as you want. So I can move some maybe in the back here. Now I have a little larger forest. Maybe rotate these around. Make a little quick scene here. Maybe if I want some icon or maybe a logo that involves some quick trees. And then another thing that's nice with these mapping options that live in the UV tab here, not only do you have UVP, but you also have some other ones that will give you some interesting color variations or UV mapping to your model. And these work really well with gradient maps. So if I come underneath this, we have UV box. And if I click that, I'm now going to get this effect. So now I kind of have trees that are lit from one side. I can then go to UV tile, which is giving me some craziness here. So it's taking all the different parts of the model and then generating a tile UV pattern from that. We have PUV tiles, which is now giving me this kind of snowfall effect. So if I had a gradient that had more white on the top and then green on the bottom, I could get some snowy trees. We have a cylinder process here, which is going to give me some of these kind of softer gradients here. So now my forest looks different. We have spherical mapping. We also have some box tiles, so we'll go and do that, and then AUV tiles and GUV tile. So just quickly making a model and then applying some of these quick UV options over here in the tool UV map area, and then using a gradient map, give you some really nice results.
But that is the quick process on how you can quickly planar map a subtool inside of ZBrush. So just make sure you have a subtool selected, then scroll down to the tool UV map area, go to the create area, and in here there is a UVP button which will allow you to apply that planar UV mapping. So I hope that helps, and if you have any other questions related to ZBrush pipelines or processes, please use the hashtag AskZBrush on Twitter. Happy ZBrushing.